Shalom. I'm sitting in the synagogue of the ancient city of Capernaum. Yeah, the same Capernaum that was the center of Jesus' teaching. The same Capernaum that was Jesus' headquarters during his uh, Galilean ministry, when Jesus and his disciples made their forays uh, from here to Jerusalem or throughout the Galilee. They always came home to Capernaum, where Jesus stayed, of course, in the house of Peter, whose house is literally just a stone's throw from the synagogue. The proximity of Peter's house indicates that he must have indeed been doing pretty do well with his family business as a fisherman uh, because the house is this close to the synagogue. They didn't come cheap. One of the amazing things about Capernaum is that so many of the stories of the Gospels, so many of the, uh, the acts, the teachings, the healings, the miracles that Jesus accomplished uh, occurred right here in the city of Capernaum and many of them even right here in this synagogue. Capernaum only has one synagogue and this is it. So let's look for example in Luke chapter 4. And Yeshua came down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. Where was Yeshua teaching on the Shabbat? Right here in the synagogue. This is the only synagogue Capernaum has. There's only, it's a one synagogue town. And so this ancient synagogue where I'm sitting right now, oh yes, this is where Jesus was teaching. And they were amazed at his teaching. Why were they amazed at his teaching, you may ask? Well, Luke tells us, for his message was with authority. This is a word that we're going to see through and through the teachings of Jesus, uh, the actions of Jesus. We're going to see Luke, Mark, Matthew, what we're talking about. We're going to be seeing this term authority over and over again. Jesus' teaching was uniquely with authority, a level of authority that was intrinsic to himself. His actions were with incredible authority. He was able to heal, to cast out demons, to still the waters by a word. What authority indeed. And the gospel authors are always uh, uh, quick to emphasize that specific attribute about Yeshua. And so his message was with authority. Now in the synagogue, yeah, the same synagogue I'm sitting in, there was a man possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, let us alone. What business have we to do with one another? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in the midst of the people, he came out of him without doing him any harm. And amazement came upon the crowd. And they all began talking with one another, saying, What is this message? For with authority, there's that word again, and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. See, who has authority to teach the way Jesus taught? Who has the authority to cast out unclean spirits so cleanly, so abruptly, with just a word of his command? And the report about him was spreading into every locality in the surrounding district. There's another account that Luke gives us just a few chapters later in Luke 7 that also deals with authority. Authority is a theme that comes up over and over again and this one actually has to do with someone else recognizing Jesus' authority who has authority himself and it also, uh, the, the synagogue that we're in, plays a major role in the story. In chapter 7, when he had completed all his discourse, his teaching and the hearing of the people, Jesus went to Capernaum, and a centurion's slave who was highly regarded by him was sick and about to die. And when he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders asking him to come out and save the life of his slave. And when they came to Jesus, they earnestly implored him, saying, He is worthy for you to grant this to him, for he loves our nation, he loves the Jewish people, he loves Israel. And it was he who built us this synagogue. It was the centurion who underwrote the building of the synagogue. The centurion who funded this synagogue. That's a lot of love, let me tell you. Synagogues like this, they didn't come cheaply. Now Jesus started on his way with them. And when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, 
Do not trouble yourself any further, for I am not worthy of you to come under my roof. For this reason I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under, what? Authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled at him and turned to the crowd that was following him. In other words, what was communicated to Jesus was the recognition of this great centurion, this man who understands orders and authority. The centurion recognizes that the authority of Yeshua was such that he didn't even have to show up. All he needed to do was speak the word and the command would be followed, the slave would be healed. And Jesus says to those who were following him, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such great faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, what did they find? The slave in good health. Because Jesus, over and over again within the gospel accounts, is uh, presented as having a unique authority. Why does he have such unique authority? Because he's the Messiah. What is the intrinsic power, the intrinsic authority within him? Well, he is, after all, the Son of God. So Capernaum would be a wonderful place for you to come and visit. I'd love to be able to tell you the story right here in the ancient walls, the ancient, ancient precincts of this city. Come and join us on our next tour, and I'll show you my Israel through Messianic Jewish eyes. Shalom.